how many 21 year olds do you know who can explode like this and just check out this one. He just points up in the air while running on the brake before catching the lob and throwing it down with his head leveled at the rim. There's no going around this, but we have a Jonathan Kaminga situation on our hands, folks. And from the looks of things, this 21-year-old beast will finally roam in the wild and be unleashed next season. In just his first preseason game, Jonathan Kaminga put everyone on notice as he dominated the Lakers on both ends of the floor by racking up 24 eight and four. Then in the next game at the Lakers home floor, JK once again dropped a monster game headlined by his 26 points. And against Sacramento, Kuminga dropped 26 once again. Now what's crazy about all this is that he shot 54.5% on the field in those three games while knocking 47.1% of his shot from the three point distance. Speaking of which, one of the areas that I noticed he worked on this offseason is his outside shooting. See, here's Clay penetrating inside the lane, and when he sucked the defense, he kicked it out to Pods, who then swung it to Kaminga in the corner. With no one around him, Kaminga sets his feet and knocks down this wide open tray without any sort of hesitation. Already. Thompson, Pajemski one more to the corner, Kaminga for three, and he lit. See, JK is not really known as a great shooter, but that seems to be no longer the case as he now has the confidence to knock down shots from beyond the arc. Look here, you can see that Vanderbilt is daring Kaminga to shoot with the way he's sagging off on him. And since that's what he wants, JK just steps in and makes him pay. Warriors had an 18 point lead. Lakers have trimmed it to 11. Kaminga the open three. And if you play him tight, Kuminga will not hesitate to pull the trigger on you the moment he sees just a little bit of daylight. JK just shot 37% overall last year from three while shooting 37.3% and 43.8 in catch and shoot and pull up situations respectively. But in those three preseason games, as I mentioned earlier, Kuminga shot 47.1% on average, which means that he has already surpassed his three point output from last season. And although the sample size isn't that big, we can pretty much say that Kaminga is trending in the right direction when it comes to the development of his outside shooting. Now, aside from causing damage from range, Kaminga also showed some major improvement in his strength as he made a couple of power plays in those three offseason games. I mean, after Fox poked the ball here, Kuminga went into full attack mode as he just bumped Fox out of the picture before laying it in. He always shows up in every year that he showed up for camp here. In Sacramento, he's weighed on 226 pounds on the nose. Now in this post play, look at how Kaminga just muscles his way inside against the much smaller defender for an easy deuce. Through the fourth. It's reserve time. It's time for a lot of these guys to... And if they decide to cover him from up top, Kaminga has the quick first step to blow by his defender. And when he gets stopped in his tracks, he can do a counterspin to elude the defense and finish all the way through. Well, speaking of his explosiveness, JK once again showed glimpses of his elite athleticism during the preseason. And there were moments when he just wowed the crowd with his electrifying rim attacks. I mean... Noticing the mismatch here against Alex Len, JK just turned on his afterburners as he blew by the big man in a heartbeat, while leaving Len with zero chance of catching up. As it takes advantage of that, or maybe get a hold of that third point guard spot. Local product, Kaminga! Then during one fast break sequence, Kaminga showed that he could play defense too, as he denied Max Christie at the rim with this monster rejection. And if that ain't enough, check out how Kaminga escapes here off a backdoor cut before punching it down with authority. Too fast. Oh, nice pass. To anyway, JK's greatest strength has always been his freakish athleticism. And during fast breaks and open court situations, he would often rely on his insane hops and blurring speed to secure the bucket. Look at this one. 
As JK crosses the midcourt, he suddenly changes gears to catch the defense on his heels as he races to the cup with no one daring to stop him. And in this downhill drive, look at how Kaminga used his speed to get into the lane. Then, when he got bumped, JK used his upper body strength to finish it despite the contact. Now, in this trail job, GP2 is completely aware that JK is lagging behind. So he just dished it off back to JK, and Kaminga just took care of the rest as he floated in the air to lay it in. Gave it right to Peyton on the turnover. Kaminga running the lane. Wow, does he float? Based on the previous clips that you just saw, it looks like Kaminga is going to have a breakout season, because apart from passing the eye test, he also racked up solid numbers to back it all up. This is scary news if you're the team that will be going up against the dubs, because Jonathan Kaminga is just one problem, and you still have Steph, Clay, Draymond, and Wiggins to deal with. Not to mention that they have a point god in their midst that you also need to take care of and keep an eye on. Well, speaking of CP3, I think Chris Paul will help Kaminga to achieve his true potential, because we have seen him groom guys like Shea Gilgis Alexander and DeAndre Ayton to become legit star players in no time. Plus, it's also going to be a treat to see CP3 throw throw alley oops to JK whenever they got to play together in the second unit as if we're going to witness the resurgence of Lob City all over again. With Kaminga's possible major leap in year three, we can expect him to be inserted in the dub's multiple death lineup rotations because he's a plug and play type of guy who can contribute and make an impact on both ends. Though we will mostly see Kaminga provide some spark as part of the second unit along with Sarich, Moody, GP2, and Podzemski. He can also be a great fit in their small ball death lineup, featuring CP3 at the helm, Steph playing the two spot, Clay slotted at small forward with Draymond Green rounding it up at the center position. And if the dubs get matched up with teams that have lots of bigs like the Lakers for instance, then the Warriors can field Kaminga at the small forward position, with Wiggins and Looney manning the front court while the Splash Brothers complete this lineup at the back court. Now you might say that the reason why Kaminga went off in those four games is that teams aren't taking these games seriously because this is just the preseason. Well, this could be true, but on the flip side, there's no denying the improvements that Jonathan Kaminga has made on both ends of the floor, as evidenced by the highlight clips you saw earlier, and even if he is unable to reproduce these types of numbers. For some reason, when the real season kicks it, I'm pretty sure that JK will create a huge impact in some form or way, because there is just no way you're holding down this kid anymore. After three long years of patiently waiting, for his opportunity to finally shine.